A very warm welcome to Hills Road, to the English Media Department, and more specifically to the English Language and Literature course. My name is Mary Scott, and I'm here with my colleague Daryl Hinchliffe. Uh, between us, we have a lot of experience in teaching English. In fact, be between us, we've been here for 50 years, so quite a long time. We're also here with two of our lovely students, Lauren and Taya, uh, to tell you a bit about the department and the course. Daryl is going to take you through uh, some aspects of the course, and our students are going to give you their perspective, which you will probably find most interesting. Um, if you decide to do English, we believe that you're going to be joining a really warm, creative and intellectually stimulating department where you'll be taught a range of skills and techniques in effective communication that will equip you for the rest of your life. As well, we hope that you will have a lot of fun. Uh, a lot of interaction and time to develop your own independent thought while exploring some really powerful literature, fiction and non-fiction texts. Before Daryl takes you through the course, uh, I want to just draw your attention to two things that might be the reason why this is the right course for you. Um, and the first one is that this course is particularly attractive to students who have really enjoyed at GCSE doing some creative writing, uh, have a passion to put pen to paper about their views or their opinions. If you've ever thought, I really like to write an interesting newspaper article on something you feel strong about in our society, uh, you enjoy arguing your view about something or debating it, then this could be the course for you because there's lots of creative opportunity. You'll also learn skills from very talented, sophisticated writers to see how they influence and persuade us. You could decide that you wanted to write a section of a novel, a piece of travel writing. Maybe you like drama and would like to write a fiction monologue and invent a character that you put on stage for us to hear their voice. This is all possible. So if you enjoy the creative aspects of life, this could be the course for you. But it's also a course for people who like analysis. And what do I mean by that? Well, essentially, that unpacking of meaning in texts, the listening to voices in spoken and written texts, and inquiring how that voice has been developed. You wanted to do this course in particular, the English Language and Literature course. And if you could also tell us a bit about what you were maybe concerned or worried about or any fears you had about this course and what it might involve? Uh, well, I mean, for me, at least, English has been a favourite subject of mine, probably my all time favourite subject um, in secondary school, especially. Um, and I think that was the main reason why I chose uh, combined English for A level. I considered pure English lit at first, but I actually discovered that I also really liked the language side of the course, or at least what we'd done at GCSE. Um, and I suppose uh, concerns wise, I did sort of wonder what the difference between pure literature and then combined lit and lang, uh, like sort of what the differences between those would be. And I know for literature, they do a lot of poetry, but I've also found in the combined course, we've also covered that as well. And I really enjoy poetry. Um, so I'm really glad that they've covered that as well. So I suppose if that's a concern that other people have, then yeah, it's okay. They cover it as well. So yeah, I think my experience is very, very similar to Lauren's. Um, I loved English in secondary school and I actually as well started off having in English Lit as my core subject and then realised that I actually loved the language part too. So chose English Lit and Lang combined. Um, uh, yeah, so I just I think the that I loved it so much at secondary school is what drove me to take it at A level. Um, concerns were maybe that um, it wouldn't include each aspect enough, but I think that's definitely I it has, and I love I love the subject at the moment. So yeah, that's great. Thank you. 
I'm going to pass over to my colleague, Daryl Lau, who's going to start taking you through the course. What we're going to be doing today then is just running through the English Language and Literature course. I, I'm basically going to be talking about um, uh, the content of the course and the structure of the course to give you a bit of information. But I think Mary has already um, gone through some of the points that are on the slide that you can see at the moment. Why study English Language and Literature? Because we're offering a creative, intellectually stimulating and supportive department um, with lots of experience. I mean, Mary's reminded me of the fact that between us we've been here for 50 years and uh, there are people who have been here uh, for similar lengths as both of us as well. So we've got an experienced uh, mem uh, group of staff here, um, many of whom you know, have studied, in fact, probably all at the moment, have studied uh, uh, English at a, a higher level, um, you know, beyond uh, uh, bachelor level, master's degrees and so on. Um, we are, are interested in offering challenging concepts. We like to challenge students with new ideas. We like students to engage in debates and discussions. We, you know, the, the ideal outcome is that students are thinking independently and questioning their assumptions, not, not just their assumptions about literature and language, but perhaps more broadly about um, you know, uh, social issues, cultural history, that kind of thing as well. So we're shaping the big ideas for the world that will be theirs as students in the future. And uh, you'll be ready to write uh, your stories and add your stories to the, um, you know, to the treasury of uh, literary and non-literary texts in the future. That's the general idea. OK, so what does the course cover? This is the, uh, the kind of nuts and bolts of everything, really. Um, and the key thing here is that the course is basically divided into three components, as they're called. Uh, two of them, components one and two, relate to examinations. And the third one is non-examined assessment, which is another word for coursework, uh, which you'll be familiar with. So I'll just go through those a little bit in turn. And what I'll say is that uh, on the course, what we do in English language and literature is whatever we're doing, we're focusing on texts. Um, and uh, this is perhaps a difference from uh, English language, as I'll come to discuss later on, but it's a similarity with English literature, because obviously literature is focused on texts. However, the nature of the texts that we're studying in English language and literature varies slightly from those on just a pure literature course, because we don't just study literary texts, and by that I mean poetry, drama, and uh, novels, fictions, and so on. Uh, we also look at a wide range of genres that are non-literary. So we look at things like autobiography, uh, we look at journalism, we look at podcasts, we look at speeches, you know, a whole range of texts that are in different genres, different styles and different modes of written and speech. So that's a broad overview. And in more detail, the first component is called Voices in Speech and Writing. And uh, it's, that's divided into two parts. The first part is a focus on a, an anthology of non-literary texts called Voices, rather cleverly. And this is an anthology of diverse texts from a range of genres and distinct modes of written and spoken uh, forms. So as I was just saying, you can look at extracts from Maya Angelou's autobiography. You might find an extract from the diaries of Alan Bennett. There's a speech by President Kennedy, an interview with uh, President Obama, uh, extracts from uh, drama, a drama on the radio, and um, uh, a film extract as well, a screenplay. So there's a whole range of different genres there to look at, as well as podcasts as well. You might find that one interesting. Uh, the skills that you're going to be learning here are close analysis of text, the understanding and applying of uh, generic conventions, you know, what, what is it that makes journalism, what is it that makes autobiography, the conventions and rules of that. You'll also be learning the skills of how to build comparisons between the texts that you're studying in lessons and texts which you uh, have not formally seen, but which in the final exam you have to bring in as comparative texts to the, um, to the, uh, the core texts on the Voices Anthology. So that's a skill, range of skills there. With the drama, which is the second component, this is this is the literary side of the course. This is a more traditional literature side, and uh, the the aim here is to uh, focus on a core set text. In our case, it's a play called All My Sons at the moment by Arthur Miller. That's that's a play that we're currently studying. This is a mid 20th century American play.
And uh, to study this, what you do is you're studying the traditional things with drama. You're looking at character, you're looking at plot, you're looking at the dramatic technique, you're looking at how language conveys the meanings, feelings, and thoughts of the characters. So there's lots of analysis there that you'll develop. But you're also looking at uh, how to understand the ways in which the context of the play, the time in which it was written, the conditions in which it was first performed, how those contexts might shape and inform your understanding of the play. So that's just kind of standalone text. Component two is called Varieties in Language and Literature. And again, this is a, uh, an examination uh, component. Uh, you'll be examined with a question on each of the uh, sections at the end. And this is divided, as with the first one, into two sections. There's an unseen prose non-fiction section. And this is very similar to the Voices anthology in some ways. You, you study a range of genres, autobiography, journalism, uh, you know, and so forth, um, which you will uh, get to know the conventions behind them pretty, in a, you know, pretty much in detail and uh, be able to analyze them, you know, in um, a wide range of uh, ways. Um, and the skill here is that you will have the confidence to be able to look at a text that you've never seen before and uh, very quickly get to the core of that text identify its meaning and articulate some complex ideas about the way it's structured. Uh, so that's a skill there. With the prose fiction and other genres, this is uh, the literary side. This is the literary focus for these texts. And this is uh, a, a comparison with the core text. In our case, it's uh, F. Scott Fitzgerald's uh, The Great Gatsby. And you have to compare that with a text from a different genre. We've, we're currently studying uh, poetry as a comparative uh, genre and the text we've chosen is Philip Larkin's The Winsome Weddings. Uh, obviously very different texts. Uh, what you're doing here is you are studying these texts in the traditional ways. You're looking at themes, you're looking at characterization, you're looking at techniques of how voice, different voices are constructed within the texts and you're also looking at the ways in which context again shapes the meaning and your, your understanding of the text. So that's a, a wide range of things that you're covering there. Um, the third component, and you may be pleased to know this is the final component of the assessment side, is a non-examined assessment, otherwise known, as I say, as coursework, investigating and creating texts. Um, and this is basically divided into two parts, or perhaps you might say three parts, really, because what you have to do with this is you, from a range of texts which are on offer, you have to independently read and uh, assess and understand the text with some guidance from teachers in lessons and so forth. Um, and you, you, the aim is that you read that independently and from that you develop a kind of theme or topic of your own and you do a creative writing task in response to that stimulus text. So uh, you choose one uh, uh, fiction text, so you might choose, uh, you know, a contemporary novel such as *The Handmaid's Tale* or um, uh, *The Color Purple* or something like that, and uh, you know, write a response in, in relation to that. Uh, it could be a new chapter for the novel. It could be a chapter from a novel of your own. It could be a complete short story based on the theme, style, characterization of that novel, and um, you would submit that as as part of the coursework component. Second component related to that is still part of assignment one, is you do the same with nonfiction. So you might look at a piece of um, travel writing, whether it be by Bill Bryson or some other writer. You might look at autobiographical writing uh, by a famous writer. It could be Brian Keenan or um, uh, Stephen, <coughs> Stephen Fry. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, you know, again, you could write your own autobiography, you could write your own travel uh, piece uh, based on that stimulus text. I've only given you a very small selection of text to think of there, a selection of options, but that's essentially what you do. And uh, once you've completed those texts, you will then write a, you know, a serious analytical commentary, basically an essay, uh, analysing your own work, explaining your decisions, your choices, the ways in which you've constructed different kinds of voices. And that's the kind of work that you'll do on that. So that, that's the overall structure of the course. It's quite, you know, quite distinct from um, other components within the, within the course. Um, as a comparison, uh, English uh, language and literature is, it has its own identity, which is quite distinct from uh, the language and the literature 
uh, A-levels uh, when they stand independently, uh, with the English language in, uh, sorry, the English language on its own, you, you will study a lot of linguistic analysis, a lot of language theory, you'll study sociolinguistic topics such as language and gender, you'll look at the history of language, you'll look at the way language is currently changing, you look at the, the possible futures of language, you'll have there's a section on child language development, how children learn language, uh, you'll have the opportunity to conduct a language investigation of your own choice. This might be the way pronunciation has changed over time or you know, different kinds of dialects and the impacts they have on, on various uh, forms of language use in the country at the moment. Um, um, and uh, you will do, th th there is an opportunity for some uh, creative writing, but it's not as extensive as with the English language and literature combined. Um, and you also look at some textual extracts, but there's no set text on English language, on the English language course. And that's a, quite a, a distinct thing for the course that we're offering on ling language and literature, that the uh, is set text, it has a, com a substantial component of creative writing. Uh, with English literature, again, if you, if you choose English literature, you study eight texts overall over the year. The focus is entirely and only on the study of literary texts, so poetry, uh, drama and fiction, um, whereas as I've already explained, language, language and literature, you, you know, that you do some of that, but you do other things as well. Uh, with literature, you study eight texts on uh, over the over the course. With um, English language and literature, you actually study, I think it's six texts, uh, which are set texts, so the, 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 that, the, the work is kind of emphasis on the set text is lighter. Um, the texts that we currently offer at Hills Road for our, uh, from the 17th century onwards, the earliest text we do in literature is 17th century text, it's, it's uh, Shakespeare. Um, whereas in language and literature, the earliest text, set text we do is within the 20th century. So we're a 20th and 21st century focused uh, course. And that has its advantages, I think you'll see. Um, there is no opportunity in, my, in the study of literature to be assessed on creative writing formally at all. So that's a very distinct feature uh, that we offer that literature doesn't. Um, there's a range of things there that you can see on the screen uh, about the kind of skills that you'll learn. We've already talked about some of those. Mary's mentioned some of those. I've mentioned some of those. Uh, but basically, it's to do with the and close analysis of texts, the development of your skills in interpretation, uh, the evaluation of how language works to construct different voices and different meanings within texts. You'll have an opportunity, particularly in the revision of your coursework, uh, in the process of writing a draft and then writing a revised version of that, you'll be able to develop your own written expression uh, and begin to understand the ways, the best ways in which you can develop your personal style and structure of uh, expression. Uh, you, be, you are developing the ability to construct reasoned, well-argued uh, uh, um, and persuasive uh, uh, interpretations of texts. And you can ar argue your case one way or another on a text. It doesn't matter as long as you've got the evidence. That's what we're really interested in. Um, as well, we, we keep stressing, you'll be able to develop your writing skills creatively in a range of different genres, particularly on coursework, uh, during which you will draft and redraft your writing. And you will also be able to um, accurately and appropriately apply a whole range of analytical concepts to text, including, as I said, to your own text, uh, your own writing. One of the main things that we offer here as well is comparison. That's a skill of being able to compare uh, very distinct forms of writing, uh, but find similarities and differences which are quite significant. And that's a, quite a high level skill. It does require a lot of kind of uh, ability to make substantial judgments and uh, carry out detailed analysis to support your arguments. So that's quite a high level skill to be, you can transfer to a whole range of different contexts later on. 
you'll be integrating diverse arguments relating to understanding of meaning and context. So that's a similar kind of point. You'll be developing all your uh, argument and reasoning processes. Mm -hmm. And hopefully the, 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 one of the main things is that you'll become more self-reflective and independent as a learner. By the end of the course, you should be quite confident that whatever's put in front of you, you're able to read it, you're able to interpret it, you're able to critique it, you're able to engage in intelligent conversation about it. And that's what we're aiming to do. Um, I was wondering if at this point we might uh, turn to Lauren and Taya again and to um, ask you what skills you personally feel have moved on or developed in your first year of studying the course? Uh, well, I mean, I think for me, I initially took the course um, because obviously I loved English, but also I wanted to really develop my linguistic skills and my writing skills as well, uh, because those are really key skills to have in any kind of career that plans you have for the future. Uh, so I definitely feel like uh, my written skills have improved and also analysis, uh, looking into text and sort of understanding uh, the cultural, social, historical context. So not only are you improving your written skills and understanding of literature, but also you're becoming a more rounded student, I feel, because you're understanding and learning about these different sorts of histories and cultural practices um, alongside your literary studies. Definitely. I think for me, um, I've definitely improved my independent learning. Um, through reading. I think that's been great. And um, starting coursework now, it's been great to explore different texts. Um, and I definitely think that that's going to help me on um, after my time at Hills. Um, I think the comparison as well, the comparison element which Darren was talking about, I think that um, the skill to find comparisons has really helped me in my like analysis as well. Um, and yeah, I think that's fantastic. And if you had to pick out something that you have studied, be that a, a section of the anthology, or if you have a favourite text between the, the poetry, a particular poem, or uh, the novel or the play, is there anything particular that you really enjoy? Um, I think for me, uh, with The Great Gatsby, I've really enjoyed, uh, especially because of the era that it's set in, in 1920s America, um, just that whole time period I personally find really fascinating. And also there were big, um, all sort of feminist movements were starting to happen then. And obviously uh, there's a huge sort of feminist narrative that is carried throughout the text. And I personally find that really interesting to study. Um, and then also it looks at the different class roles and then the American dream is also a really big part. Um, so I, I think I mainly really enjoy The Great Gatsby because it does pull in these sort of historical and sociological elements, um, which I haven't really ever studied history or sociology, but I do find such topics really interesting. So I think that in that way, The Great Gatsby almost gives me a bit of a chance to sort of experience studying such topics. Yeah, I think uh, I agree with Lauren there. And also Larkin's poetry. I find it, because we're doing all the poems, I feel I've learned so much about Larkin and his voice in his poetry. Um, and comparing the two has been great because you can find such interesting things to talk about and you can interpret it and interpret it in your own way. Um, and yeah, in, in analysis, you don't have to stick to what the writer has written, but you can interpret it in your own way and um, yeah, think about how it, it comes across to you and get that. Yeah. And uh, for other students as well, are there any aspects of the course that even if you, you feel you've been able to manage them, that you have found personally a little bit challenging on the way? Uh, or any aspect of, of something that you thought was, you know, harder to acquire, a skill that was new to you? Um, I think, at least for me, I know with voices um, that when we had first started doing that, and I think for the first essay that we wrote for that, perhaps we sort of found that a bit challenging uh, because we'd never really written essays on such a level and with, that required so much depth and analysis. Um, so I think sort of coming to terms and adapting to the level of depth that is required at A-level 
can seem a bit daunting at first and it feels like you're falling behind but uh, realistically no one's falling behind and everyone's in the same boat so I think once you manage to sort of wrap your head around the structures you should be using and the sort of approach you should be taking it genuinely does become really enjoyable and you are able to sort of immerse yourself in the work and the texts more and really enjoy what you're doing yeah again with voices i think um, the daunting thing for me was the such wide variety of texts but as i've like studied them that's become a positive and i love looking at the different texts and i feel like it's great because you can show different skills um and it's become easier for me throughout the course to really get to t come to terms with those texts and um yeah and you are just uh, starting your coursework and just looking at some text now. Have you got any ideas in the back of your head of um, what your voice might be that you produce in your creative work? Or are you still thinking about that? Um, well, I think for the fictional one, uh, because I previously also really enjoyed drama at GCSE level uh, with Taya as well. Um, so I've considered writing a monologue uh, for the fictional one. Uh, and then also... I mean, I've been reading this really good book for for the travel writing uh, called The Bitter Lemons of Cyprus, which I'm considering basing uh, travel writing off for the non-fictional one. Um, and yeah, that's what I've done yeah, so far. Yeah, I think same, my, um, my love for drama as well, either a monologue or um, a drama to write a play, um, that's really jumped out at me. Um, and then maybe something autobiographical, sorry. Um, I've been reading Girl Interrupted, um, which is a great novel. And yeah, that's inspiring me at the moment, but it could all change and I could find something else. Oh, I can see Daryl's looking very interested in, in, <laughs> get there in, in his marking part. Thanks very much, girls. We'll return to you uh, in a minute. Did you want to carry on at this point, Daryl, with the, the information? Thanks. Uh, perhaps we could just say, pause just for a moment, if Torin's there, if you could just pause uh, when you're editing this. Um, and we, I'm just going to say, I wondered, Mary, if you want, want to talk through the assessments or do you want me to carry on? No, no, I'm absolutely fine to do that. Absolutely. Okay. Just wanted to get the girls in there. And again, at perhaps the end of this. Yeah, um, no, that's excellent. That's a good idea. Thank you for that. Yeah. Sorry. Um, yeah, it was It's so dark in this room, by the way, that I actually can, I can't read my notes. <laughs> so okay. I'm really having just to improvise from points on the screen, which is a bit tricky. Um, yeah. That's me to turn on the lights out. Okay, anyway, so we're going to start again, Torin. Yeah, with a, start again, yeah, thanks. So here we go. I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about assessment now. Um, assessment, sort of being judged in your work, can seem quite daunting. Um, but you really do get a lot of help along the way. And we gradually build uh, on the skills and in giving you feedback on these. There are six key assessment points each year. And when you start with us, you will know and be able to put in your diary when those are to help you really plan your time. And we try to space these out well, and we also consider peak points in the year when other subjects are demanding a lot of you. Of course, there are times you're a little bit busy, um, but you will be supported through that what we call scaffolding uh, and modelling as well. And that means that we provide you with two ways of helping you to structure, construct your essays. And one of them is going through assessment objectives with you and making clear what the exam board is asking for you and in plain English exactly what they mean by those uh, and frameworks to help you organise your work. So areas that you might start an essay with, what you might move to, how you might include a piece, what your deductions might be, um, and modelling. And we give you many examples of, because some students like to just see a practice in work, um, different levels of work and how to help you improve and move on to the next stage. There's also quite a lot of peer and self-assessment. So we give you the tools to be able to make judgments in evaluating your own work. 
which is essential, obviously, in exam conditions, mm -hmm. that you are able to make those judgments on your own writing. And to work together with your peers is always lovely, but helping and supporting each other and giving each other some advice linked to the classwork and the assessment objectives. Uh, and students often enjoy doing that. They tend to be very generous with each other as well. Quite hard to be critical of your very good friends. Uh, but learning to do that too. Um, you do get a lot of feedback. Sometimes you're not working on long extended essays, but on small paragraphs where you might get very quick feedback from a teacher looking around the classroom, looking over your shoulder and saying, what might you add here? Uh, could you just maybe adjust the last part of that? So lots of one-to-one -one feedback. Uh, for the students who are coming through now, Lauren and Taya, obviously this has been interrupted by the pandemic, but hopefully going forward, there will be lots more one-to-one -one communication. So reflect on your work, evaluating it, and then going back and editing, making changes, seeing that that is all part of a really positive journey is important in this subject. Um, and so the returning to work previously covered is something that's a natural part of this course. Just as if you were a journalist, uh, you would have to go back to your work, edit it, improve it. Uh, if you were writing a novel, you would be making lots of um, judgments of rewriting. So that's all part of a really positive uh, process rather than seeing it as errors and mistakes. We look at enhancing, improving, moving further on. Okay. <laughs> right. So um, building on from that, um, what kind of support do you have if, uh, as a student at Hills Road? Um, when it comes to assessment and uh, other things in the in the experience of studying English language and literature, and this is support within the English Media and Film EMF department at Hills. That's what the EMF means there. Well, obviously, thinking about how you're supported at the college in order to get the assessment so that you can reflect on your assessments and so on, as Mary was just saying in the first place. Well, the first thing is, you know, you're in a classroom and you have a massive amount of resources in the classroom. You have each other, of course. Um, that's a very important thing. You know, each other, uh, each student brings new knowledge, different perspective, uh, different experiences to, to all of the uh, material that we study. And that's discussed and explored in lessons. But also the teachers are uh, subject experts. Uh, you know, we've got to, uh, higher degrees in um, uh, English and related subjects. Um, we're very aware of the process of transition from GCSE to A-level. Um, I think Mary was touching on this earlier on. And we're quite careful in the first uh, term, the first part of the first term in particular, to consider issues about transition. We offer uh, assessments which are scaffolded so that you, you're given guidance about the way to structure and organize your thoughts and so on. Uh, there's peer group support, as I already mentioned, you know, the peers are, are one of the best resources that you have in the classroom. Uh, and that's important always to recall. Uh, we have uh, weekly EMF plus sessions, as they're called, uh, and these are extra sessions which are run often at lunchtime uh, for one to one support uh, with either individuals who wish to discuss work that they uh, you know, need some clarification about or support with assessment and feedback from assessment or we'll have uh, small group um, uh, meetings as well at lunchtime when those things are available and uh, you know these these can happen either electronically or um, in person which would be a nice thing um, for us all to experience. Um, and finally, uh, of course, we offer uh, extra support in these EMF extra sessions for any students, particularly who want to study English at university. So there are extra sessions for those students too. Uh, they, they usually take place in the second year though. I think uh, lower six students are, uh, you know, are able to go along if they wish. 
Yes, I think we are hoping as well that we might have some more uh, peer group mentoring. We had some very successful practice before the, the uh, pandemic of year 13 students going into year 12 um, student lessons and doing some teaching themselves, uh, responding to questions or supporting students outside lessons and uh, year 12 students really enjoyed that and felt they could be very open and honest with the year 13 students so we do hope to have something on the lines of peer mentoring again. Thank you and uh, thanks Mary and in addition to all of that uh, we have uh, extension and enrichment which is offered through and around the department. Uh, in normal circumstances we would have uh, visiting speakers. We have in the past had uh, English conferences where conference day usually taking place usually on the hottest day of the year in July uh, when it usually happens and we have visiting speakers coming to talk about set texts or about linguistic and social social linguistic issues whatever it might be and students can attend these and it's, it's a way of extending their understanding of the subject and supplementing their knowledge. Uh, we don't very often use Zoom, it says Zoom there, but we might use Teams talks for, from outside speakers or Zoom maybe. Um, uh, there may be trips to see specific events through the year in, in a normal year, so we would have things like a visit to a play or to uh, the local uh, art cinema where we've gone to, in the past to see national theatre productions of uh, you know, plays being projected and filmed from London, um, or we've gone to London itself to see plays. Um, yeah, another feature then is the uh, fact that we offer reading lists to students for, uh, for a range of texts for those interested in studying different genres or different, uh, uh, oh I'm going to start that again, sorry, got <laughs> that's not very good, let's pause again, sorry, um, right, um, yeah, so the, these are basically the reading lists for books and films that we recommend to students, aren't they, I didn't go on too much about that, so I'll just say that's quite simply. Right, OK, here we go again. OK, we also offer reading lists for books which we think students might be interested in or viewing lists for film and television series, uh, radio programmes even, uh, which uh, we encourage students to uh, explore and find out more about uh, literature, language issues, drama, whatever it might be. So we were always trying to enrich and extend students' understanding. Uh, there are opportunities within the department for students to write uh, for in competitions or in um, uh, you know other contexts where they might be encouraged to send uh, you know writing to subject specific publications uh, in the English field um, and uh, that's uh, pretty much uh, what we do. Um, again, I've been bamboozled, sorry Torin, stop this, uh, by the work experience one. That, why that's on the English language and literature slide is a mystery to me. Um, I don't know anyone that's done work experience or work shadowing as a result of the A-level course with us, but there you go. So cut that from the, uh, from the end, from when I bumbled into that one. Um, do you want me to keep that slide on while you have a quick talk with uh, Taya yeah. And, and yeah. Lauren. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for that, Maria. Yeah. Off you go. Um, Taya, oh, I can't remember what I was going to ask. <laughs> 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 We're losing it, aren't we? Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Slowly. Sorry. Uh, oh, skill. Uh, no, no, it wasn't skill. What was I going to ask? We do Plans aspirations. For the future. Yeah. Plans right. for the future. There was one question though before then, wasn't there? The oh, characteristics you. Oh, yeah. Need. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Yes, Lauren Taylor, I was going to ask you about what you feel are the personal characteristics that would enable you to do well on this course. Um, I mean, for me, um, definitely a love of literature and reading. You know, if you find reading a chore or you find it boring, you're probably not going to enjoy it that much because there is quite a bit of reading, but that's expected because it's an English course. Um, and yeah, I think also time management is a key skill to have but for me personally my time management did used to be quite bad especially in exams um but i do think that joining the course has really improved it so even if you feel that you know especially uh, in exams you know writing long essays you feel that you often run out of time um it isn't something to worry about as such because you taking the course will genuinely help you improve that so I think as long as you have 
uh, a genuine love for literature and language in general, then I don't think that there's anything to be worried about that uh, timing wise. Yeah, I think that thinking creatively and um, having that mindset is also very key. Um, I've always been quite a creative person, so I thought the course was great for me. Um, also critically thinking. Um, I think that even if you're you're scared and you don't think you have those skills, uh, right now I think mine have definitely improved by a lot. Even though they might have been there, they've definitely improved. So I think if you're worried about that, then they are they are going to improve. And there's lots of support and the teaching is amazing to help you improve on those skills to get the best grades you can. So, yeah. yeah, I think also good debating skills definitely. as well is also really useful, especially in essays. You know, when you're supposed to be giving different viewpoints for arguments and comparing two texts, I think also being yeah, being very comparative in that way, I think, mm -hmm. uh, is a good thing to have. Yeah. Lovely, thank you. Um, and your aspirations for uh, the future, which you're already beginning to think <laughs> of uh, at the end of one year here, like what you might go on to do. Um, could you tell us a little bit about any ideas you have? They might not be set in stone and how doing this course might contribute or help towards that. Uh, well, I think for me personally, I definitely plan on going to university um, and at the moment I am thinking, I mean all the subjects I take currently are essay based subjects, so there's a lot of writing involved in them anyway, so obviously English really helps with uh, having good communication skills. Um, and yeah, at uni I'm thinking of doing uh, economics and geography sort of combination because those are the other subjects I take at the moment. But obviously there are large uh, essays that you write for those. Um, so I think English in that way, even though I might not study it at uni, it will absolutely be really helpful um, in my sort of furthering my education. Um, yeah, I, I'm taking psychology and biology as my other subjects, and I'm thinking of um, studying psychology at university, and English has definitely helped with the essay writing involved in psychology, and also um, the, the element of teamwork. I think when you're in a group setting in English, you can bounce off each other's ideas, um, and that's really helped me peer experiences really help me do um, develop in English so I think that's going to be useful in psychology that element of teamwork um, and yeah again critically thinking uh, and uh, all round communication skills great so yeah. Thank you very much indeed. Daryl back to you. <laughs> Thank you okay uh, well here's a little bit of information which you might find useful or interesting student performance because uh, this is the ultimate outcome i suppose that we're all concerned with and uh, in, in excuse me in english language and literature you'll see the, the figures there uh, students uh, in english language and literature at hills road uh, 66 percent of students uh, achieve an a star to b grade that's uh, two thirds two in every three students the national uh, figure for that is 46 percent so that's uh, quite a difference you might note there. Uh, a to E, A star to E should I say, 100% students uh, managed to attain a qualification within, the, within that range. Uh, the national pass rate is 99%. These are based on the three year grade average that says there. Right, so here we are then talking about the student destinations as Taya and Lauren were talking earlier about their possible future courses moving beyond A level, this is quite a significant thing to bear in mind. So you'll notice that um, the courses that our students go on to study at university historically have not just been courses uh, in English, a number of them are. We've got students who have gone on to study English literature with creative writing at university, they've gone on to study English literature on its own. Uh, they'll study courses on English, which is a more broad course than just literature. It may include elements of language and linguistics as well. Uh, students have gone to study English in the United States and Canada, as well as being studied, uh, as well as doing their studies in Britain. Um, we've had students uh, who have achieved uh, pass in English uh, language and literature who have gone on to study uh, in uh, courses in modern languages, this will be French, German and so forth. Uh, they also go on to study courses perhaps in uh, Latin, classical uh, 
languages too. Um, they study courses on social anthropology, primary education studies, journalism studies, politics and international development. So uh, that's only a, a range of some of the courses students do and it's not a closed set of terms either. You can always add to it with your own ambitions and interests. Um, notice that 97% uh, of uh, students uh, have gone to higher education and 3% to further education beyond uh, studying uh, in recently uh, in courses in English language and literature. So uh, that's quite, a, quite an achievement, as I think you'll agree. A couple of other uh, points that have occurred on the way of things that we perhaps haven't mentioned is the status of the subject. All of the English A-levels are of the same status and you can go on to any institution uh, to study uh, with any of these English courses. Um, we also didn't really mention that the exams are uh, open book. Uh, students often like to know, will they be able to take the text into the exam with them? And you will be able to take all your uh, uh, non-annotated uh, texts into the examination with you. Um, and the amount of students who do the course, we have about 154 students doing the course at the moment. Um, our average class sizes are 17 students with a maximum of 24 students uh, in any group. And you will have usually two teachers um, and we don't have one teacher teaching literature texts and the other one teaching language. It really is a combined course. Uh, with both teachers teaching both aspects of the course. 